Breaking news, Fabiano Caruana has just become the highest rated person in history to ever play the Stafford Gambits. And he did it on chess.com. This is one of the title Tuesday events. This was played in a blitz game against a Russian grandmaster named Arthur Gabrielian. And I do need to be entirely honest, I'm a little bit torn as to whether or not I should even be making this video in the first place, because in a way, this is not my story to tell. And I want to let you know exactly how we got here and how Fabi came to play this super dubious Gambit in a blitz this game in the first place. Now, it turns out that Eric Rosen, the guy famous for the Stafford Gambit, you all know who he is, he went on the C Squared podcast, which you might not know as much about, but this is a podcast with Fabiano Caruana and Christian Carrilla. It's a really excellent podcast. They talk about all sorts of chess drama. They talk about, you know, it's just Fabi analyzing chess. It's really cool stuff that I would encourage you guys to check out uh, if you haven't heard of it yet. But somehow Eric went on that podcast, and I don't know how he did it. This is the biggest swindle in chess history. He convinced a super GM to play one of the most dubious gambits in the world in a title Tuesday event. And somehow, that's exactly what happened. So I'm sure at some moment, Eric is also going to be making some sort of video recap on this game. If he does, I would encourage you to watch it from his perspective as well. Uh, he can give you a little bit more of the backstory as to how all of this happened. And if he ever does, I'll leave that in the link to the description below. But this is it. Uh, we got a game and we got Fabi playing the Stafford. Now, the Stafford actually was accepted in this case, and now we're going to be able to see exactly what Fabi does and how a super GM approaches a position like this. So, uh, knight to c3 was white's choice. Of course, there's a couple different moves that white can play at this point, but bishop to c5 was Fabi's choice, and this is the standard way for black to continue. You're going to be playing knight to g4 and trying to put in as much pressure as possible on the f2 square. So white plays bishop to e2, preventing the knight from going to g4 right away. So Fabi plays pawn to h5, just reestablishing this idea of playing knight to g4. And here we see white play pawn to d3. And it's worth just mentioning quickly that cast Hustling into this could be very dangerous, and maybe it's possible, maybe this is a playable variation, but you will often see very strong players just simply avoiding castling, which will lead to knight to g4, and you're basically walking into all sorts of attacks, like the queen is swooping in one way or another, and somehow white would suddenly be under a lot of pressure, so instead we see pawn to d3, which is an indication that maybe in the future white will actually be castling on the queen side, and uh, Fabi does hop in right away. Knight comes into g4 where there's some pressure on the f2 square. And instead of castling, we see the bishop taking on g4. Now, Fabi has a choice of how to take back. He takes back with his pawn. And here we get kind of an interesting situation. Now, obviously, objectively, white is doing very well. White is a pawn up. So if you ask a computer, they're always going to like white. But black, on the other hand, has the two bishops and now has some sort of pressure on the h file. Uh, which it could be useful in the futures, especially the two bishops, as we'll kind of see as this game goes on. Now, the bishop comes out to f4, very logical diagonal, keeps protection on uh, this h pawn, very active square for the bishop, and both players just decide to kind of get castled. Bishop comes out to e6, again, most active square for the bishop, queen to d2, queen to e7, and both sides end up getting castled. And this is where we're going to see uh, how both players address this position. The king goes over to b1, and now we're going to see a very interesting general concept by Black. And the thing that I think most impressed me about this game is that a lot of the times when you do play a Gambit and you are down a pawn, it feels like there's some sort of onus on you, like you need to attack, you need to be very aggressive, you got to do something right away. But instead, what we're going to see here is Fabi just kind of sitting on this position and letting it become better and better over time. He shows incredible patience, starting from this very moment, uh, and he just slowly builds up a better better position and it's actually kind of an incredible thing to see but here he starts with the move pawn to b6 and perhaps uh, this is actually when you have this structure it's very normal to play b6 and a5 and maybe he's also making a little bit of space for his king to be able to go over to b7 so we see the bishop hop back to g3 king does go to b7 both players kind of taking it easy nothing really major happening just yet Rook comes over to e1, and now a5, and white uh, black might be thinking of some sort of a4, a3 kind of ideas, and the white knight goes back to e2, and what white generally tries to do is accomplish some sort of pawn structure in the center. Like, if you just look at this pawn structure, how is white meant to make progress? Well, basically, the only way to do it would be to play moves like c3 and d4, so this is something that black should be ready for, and white is going to try to establish a center, but as we'll kind of see... 
even if white establishes the center, black can just be like, okay, so what? And the game can just kind of continue. And we'll see this in a moment because after a4, with some ideas of potentially trying to create some weaknesses, playing pawn to a3, we see first this move, knight to f4, and black needs to make a big decision. Are you just going to keep on going, allowing white to take this bishop, or are you going to move your bishop away? Well, Fabi decides, you know what? I am going to be keeping my bishop in this position, and now white takes the time to play a3, and this will prevent black from playing a3 himself, and now black takes the time to just play rook to e8, and okay, all the players have just kind of centralized all of their pieces, uh, black hid the bishop away so the white knight wouldn't be able to take it, and now we do indeed see c3, so black needs to be ready because now d4 is in fact coming, and he plays this move pawn to b5, and after d4, maybe he doesn't have to go back right away, although it does seem to make sense because there is some sort of pin going on on the D file, but he just takes a time. He's going to have to do it at some point, so he drops the bishop back to uh, B6. And now we see this move, knight to D3, and potentially the knight is taking a look at some of these squares. It's also shielding the D file. Seems like an overall pretty decent move, but now Fabi just brings the bishop back. <laughs> he said, okay, if your knight's no longer on F4, I'm going to bring my bishop in, and I'm looking at some of these light squares, and in particular, perhaps, this square on B3. So now the queen comes over to F, uh, F4. f This seems like a very logical way of just kind of getting out of the D file, trying to put your queen somewhere active. But now G5, and he just kicks the queen back and just solidly plays pawn to f6, and he's kind of creating this wall, keeping that queen from ever re-entering, and all of a sudden, none of the pieces can use this square, and it's very slow, very patient, kind of waiting for white to do anything, and basically saying, as white, you don't really have any pawn breaks yet. None of these moves seem to be effective in any way, so uh, white is kind of cramped, but up a pawn, but it's still like, what the heck are you gonna do? You gotta come up with something, but it's not incredibly easy, so white tries to play pawn to f3 but now Fabi takes once and plops the bishop in to b3 uh, and here he's playing for some sort of light squared strategy you can see how white doesn't have a light squared bishop so that's kind of something that maybe black will be able to play for and now we see the bishop go all the way back to f7 and I will admit uh, when I saw this during the game I was like what the heck are you doing so maybe this is a good opportunity for you to try to guess what the plan is maybe it's not that hard to see but after knight to b4 Fabi plays queen to e6, and he's creating this battery. Now, uh, white had anticipated this, of course, and he put this knight on b4, which is now covering the square, but at some moment, black will be able to try to get rid of that knight. Like, I don't know, maybe the next move is bishop to a5, and you're just intending on chomping this guy, so your queen will be able to get in, but all of a sudden, this is where it becomes really difficult for white to come up with a good move, and this is where we see the first truly bad move played in the game. White plays pawn to d5 which looks like it should be incredibly natural. It's the kind of move that if white wants to make progress, he's going to have to do, but somehow it's just not quite timed right because there's still a lot of pressure going on on the C file. And now after C takes D5, E takes D5, black is able to play queen to F5 check, get out of uh, this attack by the rook on the E file. And after the king moves away, at some point, we are noticing that a bunch of weaknesses have just magically been created. So after Fabi takes one of the rooks off the board, the rook takes back, and all of a sudden, black has a choice of how to win a pawn. <laughs> and he actually decides to take this pawn on d5. Uh, and white goes back, but Fabi now has gotten the pawn back, although he is in a little bit of a pin on the D file. So we see pawn going to C6, protecting the bishop. Queen goes over to E2. But now queen, uh, no, sorry, now bishop to e6 <laughs> enters into the position. I believe you also could have played queen to f3. That's like the computer super strong move. But this also seems to be a very good move as well, uh, with an interesting idea that after takes, takes, uh, when the queen comes now over to d2, and she's aiming directly at this bishop, Fabi doesn't have to move the bishop away. So I'm assuming in this position, White was expecting this bishop to move somewhere or get out of the way in some capacity. But instead, Fabi just grabs another pawn. And all of a sudden, uh, White might realize that they're in a lot of trouble because now in this position, you cannot grab the bishop on d8 because if you were to grab this, all of a sudden, you'd be running into some issues on the back rank. This bishop is beautifully defending the a2 square. So all you could do as White would be to give away all of your pieces and then just end up getting checkmated. Uh, so all of a sudden, 
It's like out of nowhere, white just kind of mistimed this d5 break, and now suddenly is in a lot of trouble. So really brilliant stuff. Uh, he kind of tries to play b3, giving up the pawn, but also creating a square from the king, so now these back rank issues won't be such a big deal. The bishop does now just calmly move out of the way. The king get, tries to get out of trouble. But after this takes, black just simply has an incredibly good position. Uh, goes for the queen trade. White says, I decline. Uh, but all of a sudden, uh, oh, bishop to g4. Black it plays an amazing move trying to offer this bishop. And if white were to take it, uh, something like this, and all of a sudden, uh, there's even more issues for white. So instead of that, after bishop to g4, no, stop. Oh, no, this did happen. Sorry, my apologies. This all did happen during the game. Bishop takes g4. The queen does take. And uh, after the king tried to take this pawn, preventing this from happening, it's actually mate and one. The queen snuck into b1, and this is how Fabi won this game. So I hope you enjoyed it. This was the first super GM to play the Stafford Gambits. Now you know, if you get this exact line, just develop your stuff, get castled, and very patiently build up your advantage. Wait for white to miss time, a punch break in the center, and then slowly take advantage of all of the weaknesses. Use a couple of tactics, be a super GM, and easily win the game. So a uh, good game by Fabi. And uh, again, check the link in the description for all of the fun stuff, and I'll see you guys later. Bye!